everyone. Welcome to the video where you are going to learn more about the color yellow. Get excited. I am. I love yellow. It's so bright. It's so sunshiny. And you know what? We need that color in our lives. So the first thing that we're going to do is if you have a palette that is already a pre-made palette, you probably have a couple of yellows in it. Every color that looks yellowish to you, I want you to pick that out and we are gonna swatch these colors out. Then I want to kind of go over the color wheel and how yellow fits into the color wheel. But really what I want you to learn through these videos is that color is all about relationships. The relationship that you have with that color, getting to know it better, locking it into your memory, and then the relationships that colors have with each other. Because as you're going to learn through this course is that color is relative, which can be aggravating, but also it can be very freeing. I will be using a pigment liner. This works really well with watercolor because I can put it down on paper and then I can immediately put water on top and it doesn't bleed. But you can use a pencil just as well. You don't need a pigment liner. Uh, just don't use a pen that bleeds. So I'll be using that. I'll be using my regular round brush, some water to rinse out. With every different color, you wanna rinse your brush thoroughly. And there's a video about that as well. So check that out. I have tube paints that I've dried into a palette but you might have a pre-made palette. So have your paints, water, paper towel, brush, and I have cold pressed paper here today. First, I want to show you the color wheel. This is something that I made up a little bit ago. I didn't make the color wheel up, but I made this color wheel. And what I wanna show you here is that yellow is right here at the top. And this is my most neutral yellow. So this is a Hansa yellow light. And when you're trying to determine the warmness or the coolness of a color, we're gonna think about moving right. Moving right on the color wheel is taking you cooler as you approach blue. Now from yellow going left, you are approaching red. So your color is getting warmer uh, depending on how far left you're going. If you're looking at a yellow color, and if it looks more green to you, you think, okay, that's a cooler yellow. And if you're looking at that yellow and it looks a little oranger to you, that yellow is a warmer yellow. So we're gonna find that out right now as you swatch your colors out. So to begin, I have three colors and I'm gonna be using the whole part of this side of the paper to swatch my colors out. And then we are gonna be doing a sketch over here. So leave a little bit of room on the right side if you're right-handed, on the left side if you're left-handed. Here we go. So I have Hansa Yellow Light here as my first swatch. And we're gonna work a little bit with playing with saturation. This is full saturation. And then I'm gonna dunk my brush in the water and add it to this, dunk my brush in the water, rinsing it ever so slightly, not too much aggravation. And I'm, I'm pulling the color down and you'll see that this color is becoming more and more transparent. It's becoming lighter in value. So we're gonna kind of compare what value ranges these yellows have compared to each other as well. Fully wash your brush out. I have a bit of new gamboge. This color is bright and sunny and warm. If you're curious, this is tube paint. This is what it comes as a fresh tube of paint. So I'm just gonna add it to my well here. Fresh tube paint is still watercolor, so you still need to add water. And I like to tell people to get it to a half and half consistency. Now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with our Hansa Yellow Light right over here, adding brushfuls. And you will see that different pigments actually react with water differently too, because it's little fine particles that the water is taking around the paper. And so you have not made a mistake if your swatches don't look consistent between colors because all colors are different. Okay, so this yellow has a little bit more of a value range than this yellow. This yellow gets very light more quicker than this one. 
Okay, some of you might have a color called yellow ochre in your palette. And I wonder if you'll see the difference here. This is yellow ochre. And I'm doing the same method, just I'm not agitating the brush as I go in the water, but I'm just kind of flicking a little bit of paint off and then it gets, it gets more water into the brush. And this is why cold pressed paper is really nice for watercolor because it just lets it hang out onto the surface. It's thirsty, so it takes it on and it doesn't crinkle up too much. So try to get yourself some of that. And I'm done here. These are all of my yellows that I wanted to test out today. And if you just had one yellow, if you're only working with Simply Primaries, that's fine too. Congratulations, you've learned about your one yellow color. As you swatched these out, did you have a color association with one of them? Did one of them remind you of something like maybe a jacket you had one time that you really liked or one color that you saw in the sunset last night or maybe it was like an autumn leaf? I want you to draw a sketch of that on the side and then we're gonna fill that object in with one of your yellow colors. What I thought of here was a dandelion and it's, it's been dandelion season here, where I am right now. So I've seen a lot of these in my yard. Personally, I like them. I don't like to mow them down, but you know, you gotta do, you gotta do those things sometimes. Okay, of course, this is not a, an accurate drawing of a dandelion. I am going purely from memory so let that encourage you that this drawing is just a sketch. We're just kind of sketching out the idea here to make this association stronger. And maybe this tells you you need to go back and look over your object a little closer next time. Memory drawings tend to remind you what you forgot. Okay, so here's my dandelions. And I noticed in dandelions that in the center, they are warmer red right here and then they kind of become a, a more neutral yellow on the sides so i'll use that color and water it down a little bit do remember that watercolor dries lighter than how you put it on the paper at first so in some instances you need to actually lay it down a little more saturated so that it turns out to be the color that you imagined. Keep that in mind. You may not have a green with you on you if you're doing a dandelion or a flower, but I wanted to just bring in a little bit of green on this one. So I'm gonna do that. If your object is just one color, just use that one color. If you wanna dip into something else, go for it, but it is it is not required this time. And of course we have the dandelion leaves. Should probably add a few of those in here for context. And here we go. Here are our very lovely sunny dandelions. So congratulations, you have made a color association with this object that you've drawn. You have swatched things out and I want you to compare your yellows if you did more than one yellow here which yellow looks cooler to you? Which yellow is teetering more towards the green side? In all these yellows, my Hansa Yellow Light, which is usually fairly neutral, is looking quite green here compared to my sunnier yellow, which is my new Gamboge. And then the yellow ochre, to me, that one looks like a packet of that mac and cheese powder that you have to sprinkle in your noodles after you make macaroni and cheese. That's what that color reminds me of. We have quite a good range here and all these colors will be useful for different things. So now you know yellow better. I want you this week to find a bunch of yellow things around your house or out in nature that you can compare with each other. I want you to, if you can gather those things, gather them up and set them in a line going from cool yellows to more neutral yellows to warmer yellows. And that is just gonna help set these new things that you've learned about yellow into your mind. One thing I do want you to do is to label what these colors are if you have more than one so that it, when you expand your palette and you get different types of yellows, you can compare those yellows to these yellows 
I'll just show you real quick. I, I got some new gouache paint, which is a lot like watercolor, but I swatched my yellows out here. And if I compare these yellows to what I've done here, they're a little different. I would say these are very similar, but even this warmer yellow to the right of this yellow is not as warm as this one. And this more opaque, cheesy looking one is kind of somewhere in between these two. So I'm excited to see how how you're going to line your yellows up and what what you're going to do with that and then you always want to date your work so that you can go back and remember how you've improved over this time so i'm going to do that as this dries and i will see you guys in the next video bye If you finish this color exercise and you're thinking, I wish I was better at memory drawing, well, the thing that you need to practice more often is drawing from life by observation. As a note, in my other video courses, doing those visual exercises are really gonna help to restock your memory bank full of images that you can recall at any time. And that's really what drawing is. Drawing is remembering something that you have seen and recalling that information so that you can narrate it on paper. Okay, now is the time to jump into this yellow video exercise. And then the next color video that you'll watch after you do these exercises is the video that's all about the color red. I'll see you there.